a karate class in Battersea and a moment of light relief. Childcare is the latest election battleground as Labour and the Lib Dems try to outmanoeuvre each other. These karate kids all went to Shaw Start Centres when they were younger. Many have now closed. Follow me. Downstairs, one of the parents points out where she used to take her children. So this is where the Sur Star used to provide their services some many years ago. And how important a service was it for you? It was um, a way to cope and you build up a, a, a support network with other parents. What about this put a beer on? <laughs> Where would you put the beer? Jeremy Corbyn was getting down with the kids in Leeds to launch his latest pledge. 1,000 new Shore Start centres bringing a new Labour initiative back to life. It's an election pledge Labour's shadow education secretary is particularly passionate about. She relied on a Shore Start centre as a young mother. We know we've lost over a 1,000 of them across the UK, so we want to put that funding back in, and we'll pay for that by making sure that the corporations and the most richest, the very richest of the top 5% will pay a little bit more. And by doing that, we'll save so much money on making sure that children are school-ready and get the best possible start in life. But early years Minister Nick Gibb has defended the government's record, saying we're investing record amounts in high-quality childcare and we've seen the quality improve with 95% of childcare now rated good or outstanding. The Lib Dems are also competing for the title of the party for parents. They say they're putting free childcare at the centre of their manifesto, evidence they say they're not just an anti-Brexit party. This policy of universal free childcare for everyone from ages two to four, but also for working parents from that critical gap between that nine month and two years of age period where there's nothing at the moment, is front and centre of our manifesto and shows our commitment to making sure that we're supporting those families at a critical time. But a word of warning from the largest provider of childcare in the voluntary sector. Well, on the surface, it sounds like a great offer, obviously, for parents, but the reality is we've been here before and the devil is in the detail. And it just worries me that in this sort of arms race to see who can offer the best deal, more so-called free childcare, that we're the ones that have to pick up the pieces on these sort of hollow promises. These children have benefited from free childcare, but with the sector now described as in crisis by providers, politicians need to deliver on their promises and fast. Jane Dodge reporting there. The Conservatives have pledged to create 50 million more appointments in GP surgeries in the next five years. Health Secretary Matt Hancock said as well as training 500 more GPs each year, there would be more nurses, physiotherapists and pharmacists. The British Medical Association, the trade union representing all doctors in the UK, said the commitment was encouraging but pointed out that a previous pledge to deliver 5,000 GPs by next year had fallen way short of target. Well, the health secretary has come under attack today from one of his senior colleagues, former Conservative Party chairman Baroness Varsi. He tried to defend the government's downgrading of an inquiry into alleged Islamophobia in the party into a general investigation into prejudice. After Baroness Varsi criticised the decision, Mr Hancock said that while the Conservatives did need to investigate Islamophobia, others in the party took a more balanced approach than her. She accused him of white-splaining. I spoke to her earlier and asked her to elaborate. Well, this issue of Islamophobia within the Conservative Party, Cathy, has now gone on for nearly four years and three chairmen later, two prime ministers later. I'm just shocked that my colleagues still do not understand uh, what the issue is, the extent of the issue and how as a party we need to deal with it. So I think it's becoming frustrating uh, and, uh, and I just feel that it's time for the party to take it seriously. Because it's now going to be a general investigation into prejudice. What, what do you make of the reason for that downgrading or backsliding, as you call it? I think it's uh, sad, but it's an indication of the fact that the Conservative Party still have not come to terms with the level of Islamophobia uh, within uh, our party, that they don't take the issue uh, seriously. And what really disappoints me in all of this, Cathy, is that we've quite rightly been calling out the Labour Party for the uh, allegations of racism within their ranks, and yet we seem to be able to see that form of racism. We seem to be able to call out racism in, a, in other political parties. 
we seem to be able to take our opponents to task, and yet we singularly fa fail to deal with the Islamophobia and racism with our, within our own backyard. Well, Boris Johnson says he's proud of his Muslim heritage and that his great-grandfather could recite the Quran off by heart. Do you believe him? Look, this is the kind of oldest uh, defence in the book, Cathy. People like me who have been involved in uh, fighting for racial equality for nearly three decades have encountered the I have a black friend defence for on many, many occasions. You know, it doesn't absolve somebody of, uh, of racism that either they have been part of or their party is now a part of. Is Boris Johnson racist, either consciously or unconsciously? Look, that's not a term that I want to use uh, for the Prime Minister. He is the Prime Minister of this country, and I don't think that it would... Uh, I don't think it would be great for our international standing for him to be labelled in that way. But is way. he, though? Uh, what I would like him to do is... N no, what I would like Boris Johnson to be is an anti-racist. What I would like Boris Johnson to do is to take all forms of racism seriously, and the way he can show that commitment is by going ahead and having the inquiry into his Islamophobia that he promised during his leadership race. But can you urge your fellow British Muslims to vote Conservative happily, hand on heart? Um, I would say that the climate for British Muslims within the Conservative Party is hostile. I think that the climate that has been created in the country because of the Conservative leadership is hostile uh, for British Muslims. But in the end, what I hope that this election will be about, which is what I've argued about from the outset, is that I hope it's going to be about tax and spend, about climate change and about Brexit. They're the big issues affecting everybody in this country. And I hope ultimately people will be make their decision based on that rather than based upon which party is the least or the most racist. Can you stand there right now and say, vote Conservative? Uh, I will be going out and I will be helping some of my Conservative colleagues, my friends, during the election. And in the end, I hope that people will be concentrating on those issues that affect all of us. But I hope that at the end of this, uh, whichever party gets into government, they will look and take a long, hard look at themselves. It cannot be right that individual communities in this country feel that there are certain political parties that simply do not make people like them feel that they are a part of Britain. Baroness Farsi talking to me earlier. A member of Jeremy Corbyn's shadow cabinet has denied allegations of anti-Semitism after the BuzzFeed website claimed that he changed the lyrics of the Beatles song Hey Jude to Hey Jews on a bus trip from the Cheltenham races in March last year. The Shadow International Development Secretary, Dan Carden, responded by saying, I would never be part of any behaviour that undermines my commitment to fighting racism in all its forms. Jeremy Corbyn said he was looking into the report.